Hey, I'm Anfa. I've been recently recording some voiceovers and I thought it's a good opportunity to record a video about my workflow and all the tricks I've learned in making that kind of recordings. Of course, I'll be using open source software and Linux. I would just like to interject for a moment. What you're referring to as Linux is in fact GNU slash Linux, as always. So in this video, I will record, edit, process and export a voiceover track, all done in Ardor 6 and open source LV2 plugins, all running on Manjaro Linux. Let's go. Okay, so before we start, I want to talk about things you need to take care of to actually record a decent track. Because if you record crap, we're not gonna be able to edit or process anything good out of that, okay? So the first thing is to make sure your room is as quiet as possible. Um, turn on any equipment you don't need to run, close any windows or doors, uh, warn the people you're living with that you need some silence right now and you'll be recording, etc. Second thing is treat your room so there is minimum amount of reverbation happening. If you clap your hands in your room, you will hear a reverb tail. If this reverb tail is long, you're gonna have a really hard time recording a usable voiceover because voiceovers by nature need to be extremely dry. So if you can bring some clothes, bring some bookshelves um, and hang it all around your stuff, uh, if you don't have access to professional sound treating materials, then you can do this kind of stuff. If that's not possible, maybe open up a wardrobe full of clothes and sit on the edge of that so that your microphone is pointing towards all the fabrics hanging in there. And the mass of that is going to absorb a lot of reflections coming in from outside and from your voice bouncing from the walls, and it's going to cut down on the reverberation, and this is very important. Third thing is use a directional microphone. Most microphones you'll buy have a so-called cardioid pattern. Uh, so if the microphone is pointing up, it's going to capture most sound from the from the front. So if I'm here, you can hear me very clearly. It's not gonna capture as much sound from the side. So if I go here, you can hear that um, it's not as loud. And if I turn around the microphone and make it completely face the opposite direction, you can hear that I'm much quieter. So use this to your advantage. And for example, point the back of the microphone at the loud computer that you cannot turn off because it's recording. Fourth thing, is to record, get as close to the microphone as possible. I'm going to show you this from a side. So you don't want to be recording your voiceovers from here. You want to be recording them from here, as close to the microphone as possible without touching it, okay? Why is that important? Because it's going to give your microphone more of your voice and less of the room's Mm, response to your voice and we want that we want as dry as possible so less reverb more of your voice okay also if we get close to the microphone capsule what's gonna happen is that the low frequencies in your voice are going to get emphasized and we could of course do this artificially in uh, post-processing with an EQ uh, but this is a natural thing that's happening it's called proximity effect and it's very helpful in getting that deep radio tone of your audio of your voice, okay? Because, you know, um, m many male vocalists are going to have that low tone, but it's going to be quiet, and if you get up close, it's going to get amplified. If I record this this from, from a little bit farther away, even though I'm speaking just as low, you can hear that there is not as much lows in my voice present at the microphone, so getting up close is going to help you sound deeper. Now, make sure you don't touch the microphone, because if you do, you're going to record a bunch of this stuff, and you don't want that. Fifth thing, <laughs> use a pop filter or a windshield. This here is a windshield or a windscreen, uh, and it's made for this specific microphone. This is um, Shure SM58, I believe, and this is the windshield is called AWS, AW2S or something like that. 
um, and it's made for this microphone. But it only works if you talk to it from the front. I'm going to blow into the microphone. And if I go to the side, these plosives are going to get through, go through and uh, create unpleasant sounds at the microphone capsule, which we don't want. So make sure that, like, that your pop filter is doing the job. You can't be like touching your pop filter because it's not going to do the job because your plosives are going to go right through it. You need to have a little bit of distance, but it can be very close to the microphone. Like you need to listen, record and balance that. Okay, if you don't have any plosives protection, you don't have any windscreen or anything, the least you can do is simply move uh, so that your, the microphone is facing your mouth from the side. And this way, you will still be able to record quite a clean vocal with a very good response, but all the plosives are going to go in another direction and not hit the microphone capsule, which is important. Okay, seventh thing is warm up your voice before you start. Uh, you can do that. There's uh, many different warm-up routines. Uh, you can, I don't know, you can beatbox for a while or sing your favorite song for 10 minutes or read the text as expressively and overemphasize everything. <laughs> like if I'm going to read my script, make sure your room is as quiet as possible. Close any doors, windows, turn off equipment. You don't need to run. Warn people at home that you need to them to be quiet for a while, etc. You need to like warm up your voice so that you're not sounding like that, like you're sluggish and and, and like you can't articulate stuff because you're just your your muscles are not warmed up. That's one thing. So articulation needs some warm up. Uh, but also your voice range needs warm up too. For example, if I don't warm up correctly, I'm not able to hit these radio like deep and bassy notes. And I'm just gonna, I'm stuck a little bit higher and it's not as satisfying to listen to. So don't rush it. Like, I'm not gonna teach you a, a warm up routine. I'm not a voice coach, but um, let your voice warm up gently and then it's gonna give you the best. Don't stress it though. Eighth, if you produce a lot of smacking noises, clicks, pops from your mouth, like this kind of stuff. You can bite your tongue gently and it's going to trigger your saliva emission and that's going to water your mouth a bit and it's going to help with that. We of course can cut out these uh, noises to a certain degree in post but it's a lot of work so if we can get it better at the source let's do that. Okay and ninth thing <gasps> to record you'll need as low audio monitoring latency as possible. Uh, I switch my jack server to the buffer size of 128 or 256 frames per period. There's a command line program to manage your jack server's buffer size and it's called jack underscore buff size. I'm going to move this microphone here so you can hear me better. If I run it without any arguments, it's going to give me what is the current buffer size. If I run it with an argument, I can change the current buffer size. And now we are running Jack at a smaller buffer size. Now, mind that sometimes I've had ardor crashing if I do that while it's running. Okay, so save your work before you do it. Some other programs using Jack may also crash at times. Like, it shouldn't be a problem, but sometimes it is. Uh, so be careful. But usually I do it and it's not causing any problems. So now I'm recording um, the video as well, so I'm going to keep that a little higher because uh, my CPU load might prevent me from going with the lower buffer size. But we need as low latency so you can hear yourself through the headphones as you speak and hear what is actually being recorded. And if it's gonna have a little bit of delay, that's going to be very distracting and you won't be able to give a good performance. Uh, most audio interfaces, external audio interfaces, have an option of direct monitoring. So you can use that also. You can disable monitoring in Ardor um, or any other program if you're using and use that instead but it's not going to give you any processing so well uh, you might be able to if you can get a low buffer and pro monitor your audio through ardor then you can you know have the compressor and the eq and 
all the other stuff working as you speak and hear the final results in your ears. But for now, we're gonna record it without any processing and we're gonna set the processing after we record and edit the material. Uh, all right, and the 10th thing I want to mention before we start recording is you need to set your mic gain properly. I like It might be obvious to some of you, but it might not be. So the mic gain is the amount of amplification you apply in your preamplifier for the microphone. And usually audio interfaces have some indicator of the sound level being okay or being too hot, meaning it's clipping or it's saturating the signal, which is not good because that means distortion. I'm going to turn this down in post, but I'm going to let you hear what a distorted voice sounds like, okay? So I'm going to turn up my mic input gain until it starts distorting. And I'm going to speak, speaking, speaking more. Okay, now I'm distorting. My uh, audio interface is showing me distortion. I am turning this down in post so you don't have your ears hurt. But now if I speak and I turn down the volume, I'm watching a little LED. Okay, it, start, it stopped, okay? Right now I'm not distorting, but if I say something louder, it blinks again, okay? Louder, louder, louder. All right, that's, that's uh, now I've set it to a volume where I don't see any clipping, even if I do a louder sound. So generally you want your preamp gain to be as high as possible so that you have less noise, because if it's lower, then you will have to boost it more and you have more noise coming from the preamp and uh, audio interface itself. But if it's too hot, you're gonna distort it and that's no good. So make the loudest sound you possibly can, lower it, until it's not clipping and then you're good to go to record. All right, that's all the prerequisites. Let's record the vocals. Um, depending on how much text you have, I think it's best to first rehearse, uh, read the text out loud. For example, you can like rehearse a couple paragraphs at once, then record them, then rehearse the next couple and process them in chunks until you get to the end of it. Sometimes when there's not much text, you can just rehearse it and record it in one go. So uh, I'm going to record a little bit of text, a little bit of a famous text, this kind of text. And let's record only the first paragraph, okay? Because it's not about uh, recording it all and like making it uh, complete. It's about showing you the, the process and how it's done. And uh, hopefully that's gonna give us enough room to actually do that. All right, so what I'm gonna do is put on my headphones. Note that these are closed back headphones. They are not going to produce a lot of sound outside of the capsules. And that's important because you don't want your headphones to be feeding back sound to the microphone again, because that's gonna sound bad. And if you hear that happening, turn down your monitoring volume. I'm going to enable recording. I have an audio track in order, my microphone is assigned, and I can already hear my voice. And it's pretty okay, it's not bad. I can hear my voice. Okay. All right, now I'm going to rehearse this paragraph. So I'm gonna read it very quickly so I can record it fluently without too many errors. All right, I made a few little mistakes there, but right now I should be able to record this in full. So let's start capturing and I will go on. <laughs> if I make a mistake, I'm gonna back off a little bit to give myself leeway to cut so that I have an overlap between different takes. And I'm not going to stop the recording until I'm done. So it's a, it's a single chunk, it's a single region on my timeline. You can do that, you can stop and resume, uh, but I like to do it this way. It's a bit easier to re edit after that. All right, let's go. Also an important thing, water. <laughs> I'd just like to interject for a moment. I would just like to interject for a moment. What you're referring to as Linux is in fact GNU slash Linux or as I've recently taken to calling it, GNU plus Linux. Linux is not an operating system unto itself, but rather another free component of a fully functioning GNU system made useful by the GNU core libs, shell utilities, and vital system components comprising of a full, comprising a full OS as defined by POSIX. 
Okay, that was pretty flawless, so I'm going to record another paragraph without rehearsing it so we get more mistakes so I can show you some editing uh, tricks, okay? Many computer users run a modified version of the GNU system every day without realizing it. Through a, part through a peculiar turn of events, the version of GNU, which is widely used today, is often called Linux. And many of its users are not aware that it is basically that it is basically the GNU system developed by the GNU project. That it is basically the GNU system developed by the GNU project. Let's go on. There really is a Linux, and these people are using it, but it is just... There really, there really is a Linux, and these people are using it, but it is just a part of the system they use. Linux is the kernel the program and the system that allocates the machine's resources to the other programs that run, that you run, to the other programs that you run. The kernel is an essential part of an operating system, but useless by itself. It can only function in the context of a complete operating system. Linux is normally used in combination with the GNU operating system. The whole system, the whole system is basically GNU with Linux added, or GNU slash Linux. L um, the, the whole system is basically GNU with Linux added, or GNU slash Linux. All the... or GNU slash Linux. All the so-called Linux distributions are really distributions of GNU slash Linux. All the so-called Linux distributions are really distri Linux distributions are are really distributions of GNU slash Linux. Are really distributions of GNU slash Linux. Alright, so we've got our material recorded. Now it's time to edit it. Um, for editing voiceovers specifically, it is very useful to switch order to the ripple mode. In ripple mode, if you delete something, like I'm splitting this region, I'm deleting here. Everything after that on the timeline is moving forward or back, depending on how you think about it, which is very useful for deleting mistakes in the voiceover. I'd just like to interject for a moment. I would just like to interject for a moment. What you re All right, let's start with this one. I would just like to interject for a moment. What you're referring to as Linux is in fact GNU slash Linux, or, as I've recently taken to calling it, GNU plus Linux. Now there's a little bit of... And we can cut it off, cut it out. Uh, if I just do that. Calling it GNU... It sounds better already. GNU plus Linux. Linux... We could also remove this bit. Linux is not an operating system unto itself, but rather another free component of a fully functioning GNU system made useful by the GNU core libs, shell utilities, and vital system components comprising of a full comprising okay and vital system components compri comprising okay comprising comprising let's cut here and delete this system components comprising a full I think we should move this back a little bit uh, yeah, we can also make a little bit of a fade. ...components comprising a full OS as defined by POSIX. Great, we don't want these craps here. <laughs> Alright, but this is good. ...defined by POSIX. Many computer users run a modified version of the GNU system every day without realizing it. Through a part... That's... There's a little bit of... Clicks and pops. I'll remove this one. Realizing it. Through a part. Through. A oh. Okay, I need to preserve this breath here. So I'm going to move it a little bit and crossfade without realizing it. Through a peculiar turn of events, the version of GNU, which is widely used today, is often called Linux. Now this is ugly, I don't want that. And I know what this is. And called le Okay, this is cold, but this is a piece of garbage. I want to remove that. 
I'm not sure if this is going to be a problem. This is a steep click. Well, let's hear if there's going to be a click. Then called Linux. Okay, no click because Arrow creates these default um, default fade outs and fade ins. We can also inter overlap these regions and it's going to crossfade between them. It is often called Linux. And many of its users are not aware that it is basically that it is basically okay that it is ba <clears throat> that it is basically or that it is or that is that that it all right i need to that or that is it. so in this kind of situation what you need to do is find the spot in two takes that is identical so you can layer them all one on top of each other or that is that is that and here is that it. okay i need to layer these two Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. And where that it is. Now let's find a place where these two can meet. Where that it is basically. Okay, I think we need to back off a little bit. The GNU. Where that it is basic. Where that it is basic. All right. You see, we managed to, to find a, po a spot where the two takes can be transitioned between without you hearing any any discrepancy are not aware that it is basically the GNU system develop ah uh, another ugly stuff maybe let's mute this one instead of deleting it system developed by the GNU project now why muting is because I don't want to shorten this part I just want to have a pause there and in this ripple mode it's it would be automatically shortening this part new project that it is basically the GNU system, aware that it is basically the GNU system developed by the GNU project. Okay, this is another take by the GNU project. I like this system developed by the GNU project. Users are not aware that it is basically the GNU project. That it is basically the GNU or that it is base. All right, so we have another take which is better, so I want to find it. Where that, that it is, where that is are not aware that is that it is okay that it aware that oh I can see by the waveform that we are having the same part here okay I'm gonna delete this oh 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 um and this is where the uh, ripple mode is kind sometimes fighting against you and sometimes slide mode would be better uh, because it wouldn't automatically slide this thing not aware that is basically are not aware that is basically the GNU. Oh, wait. Where that it is basic. Oh, okay, okay. Where that it is basic. That it is basically. Where that it is basic. Where that it is. Oh, that's a slip up. Oh, we need to combine more of that stuff. All right. It is basically the. Computers are not aware that it is basic. That it is basic. Okay, so we need to um, delete that. Yeah, we're in the slide mode. I think we're gonna be good in the slide mode for now. So the GNUs are not aware that is. We need to fix this with that part, but also replace the other part later with this. Uh, okay, which part is this? Users are not aware that it is basically aware that it. Aware that it is. Okay, aware that it is not aware that it is basically the. Basically the. Okay, I'm gonna split it here. That it is, and go here. The, it is basically the. That it or that it is basic. Not aware that it is base. Aware that it. All right. Now we have the third take, and we're going to find this place. Oh, nice. This, I can make a crossfade here. That it is basically the GNU. System. Its users are not aware that it is basically the GNU system developed by the project. Okay, uh, that's the type of editing I wanted to show you. Sometimes you have multiple takes which have like parts of words that are okay and parts which are not okay. You need to combine them into a single flawless performance and finding the same spot, layering the two and finding the perfect place to go from one to the other is how you do it. <laughs> now, where are we? Project. Project. Them developed by the GNU. Let's go on. All right, and then there's the third paragraph. I wonder if I should edit the third paragraph. I think that's going to be enough. I'm going to save this project.
I'm not going to edit the, the rest of that because it's a waste of time. I'm just doing this to show you the workflow and the tools. And I think we've sh I've shown you enough. <sighs> okay, now let's go to the third part. After recording, editing, let's go to processing. So to process this, first thing I'm going to do is have a little bit of noise. That's going to be perfect. Okay. What I'm going to do is add a plugin that performs noise removal. It's called Noise Repellent. It's an open source LV2 plugin. What it does is um, it, it does pretty much what Audacity's noise removal does and that it profiles some sound to create a frequency response profile and then it uses that profile to remove noise. So first we need to activate the Learn Noise Profile option and play back some of the noise through the track. Now it's learn, it's been learning, I can disable this and it's going to attenuate the noise. You can hear that we hear no noise right now in there. I'm going to move that plugin before the fader. Let's listen to the voice and see how that handles it. It can only function in the context of a complete operating system. Now I don't hear any artifacts from this, but we could lower the reduction amount. Linux operating system. Linux Let's mute it or bypass the, pro the effect Eat operating system. And now I can hear, okay. Let's go with six decibels of, um, or maybe even eight decibels. I still can't hear at even at 10 decibels of, the, of, re of noise reduction. Um, now there's always gonna be a little bit of noise. And after we apply equal uh, equalization um, and compression, the noise is going to be brought up. So if we can get it down, that's good. That's always great. So the next thing to do is uh, I'm going to add a gate. I've recently started using LSP plugins a lot and I think they're really good. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go LSP gate. LSP gates mono because we're using mono and mono track. LSP LV2, great. Okay, so if you don't know what a gate is doing is it's Attenuating the sound when it goes below a certain threshold of volume. I'm going to make this keep stay above other windows and let's play back some sound. Linux is normally used in combination. Now let's move down the threshold with the GNU operating system. The whole system, the whole system is basically GNU with Linux added. Okay, so <laughs> what is really good about the LSP gate is that it creates this very useful graph. I would just like to interject for a moment. What? Oh, you see, now we're, we've cut off the end of the word too fast, so I'm gonna lower the threshold. What you're referring to as Linux is in fact GNU slash Linux. Now, we didn't let the start through or quickly enough. I'm going to enable auto return so that I can play back a part of the timeline. GNU slash Linux or as I've recently I want to remove, reduce the attack time new slash lit so that it opens up the gate quicker. You can see this ramp if I make the attack long, new slash Linux. Or, as I've recently taken to calling it, GNU plus. You can see that GNU was GNU. It was softened because of the low, long attack. If I shorten it, or, as I've recently taken to calling it, GNU plus Linux. Let now we want this... Uh, gain reduction envelope to only duck when there is nothing being said, okay? So it's cutting off or attenuating the silence between words. And this is going to help us first reduce the noise even further and also shorten the reverb tail of this room because this room isn't properly acoustically treated and there is some reverbation and we can get rid of that a little bit by using this gate. Of course, it's not gonna do wonders, but it's a little bit of a push towards a better sound. And whatever we can do, we'll do it to have the better sound. Or, as I've recently taken to calling it, GNU plus Linux. Now, the gain reduction is 24 decibels and we could go all the way to negative 72, or, as I've recently taken to calling it, GNU plus Linux. But I think that often is very brutal and like doesn't sound very natural. So 
we can go if stay with negative 24 or even go higher. Or, as I've recently taken to calling it, GNU plus Linux. Linux is not an operating system unto itself, but rather another free component of a fully functioning GNU system made useful by the GNU core libs, shell utilities, and vital system components comprising a full OS as defined by POSIX. Many and it nicely attenuates the, spot, the pauses, so we don't have any noise lingering there. Okay, the next thing I want to do is apply an equalizer. EQ, and I'm also going to use LSP EQ. Parametric equalizer 16 mono, yes. Mm, let's make it stay on top. And, uh, okay, so the first thing I want to do is boost the lows a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to use a low shell filter. I'm also going to turn on the analysis and make it post EQ. Or, as I've recently... Now we can drag this in. Or, as I've recently taken to calling it, GNU plus Linux. Or, as I've recently taken to... Now we're like emphasizing the proximity effect and making the voice sound a little bit more radio-like. Or, as I've recently taken to calling it, GNU plus Linux. Mm, we've got three, uh, three decibels of... Actually, I want to have less. Like, or, yeah, I'm going to zoom in because three decibels is already a lot. Or, as I've recently taken to calling it, GNU plus Linux. Okay, now we have two decibels of gain in that, on that. Another thing I want to do is cut off low frequencies that we don't need. And that's going to be anything happening below my lowest, like, fundamental. So I'm going to use a high pass filter, and we're going to want to use the steepest one available. So let's go for, I don't know if it's B, L, R, L, R, X, and times four. Yeah, this is extremely steep. Or, as I've recently taken to calling it, GNU plus Linux. Linux is not an operating system unto... <laughs> now that reminds me of the video I made about achieving the radio voice transmission effect. Or as I've recently taken to calling it GNU plus Linux. Linux is not an operating system un I'm going to unzoom so I can see more or, of, as the, I've of the frequency spectrum analysis or, as I've recently taken to calling it, GNU plus Linux. Okay, I like that. Let's have a bell filter to boost the highs a little bit. That's something I do often. Or, as I've recently taken to calling it, GNU plus Linux. Now, don't pay attention to the sibilance just yet. Sibilance, the s sounds. We're going to attenuate them after this, but I want to get the general vowel tones to sound a little bit brighter. Or, as I've recently taken to calling it, GNU plus Linux. Okay, Linux. The, I'm using the mouse wheel to widen this filter. Or, as I've recently taken to calling it, GNU plus Linux. All right. Another thing I want to do is have a... Okay, maybe not the notch filter, maybe a bell filter first. I'm going to search for resonances. So I'll have this filter and make it narrower. Or, and I'm going to sweep through the spectrum and listen to anything that goes, that jumps out at me. Let's maybe sweep with this frequency knob so I'm not changing the amplitude. So I, so the actual thing jumping out is not the caused by me just move, wiggling my mouse up uh, accidentally. Or, as I've recently taken to calling it, GNU plus Linux. Linux is not an operating system unto itself, but rather another free component of a fully functioning GNU system made useful by... Okay, this, this sounds like uh, something's going on in there. And I want to attenuate this part. So let's go and lower the gain to negative values. Or, as I've recently taken to calling it, GNU plus Linux. Now we can mute this filter and listen to how it sounds without it. Or, as I've recently taken to calling it, GNU plus Linux. Okay, I think it sounds a little bit cleaner. We could do this a bunch more times. Create a bell filter. Narrower it. Uh, sweep up the frequency spectrum. Or, as I've recently taken to calling it, GNU plus Linux. Linux is not an operating system unto itself, but rather another free component of a fully functioning GNU system 
made useful by the GNU Core Libs, Shell Utilities, and Vital System components comprising a full OS as defined by POSIX. Many computer users run a modified version of the GNU system every day. Okay, I think this sounds a little bit nasally and I could want to attenuate it a little bit. And then we can see and compare if it sounds better with that filter on or not. Let's listen to it without. Or, as I've recently taken to calling it, and with. GNU plus Linux. Linux is not an operating system unto itself, but rather another free comp... I can barely hear a difference, but I think this one sounds a little bit cleaner. Now, any room you're going to record with has some room modes or resonances. And that in smaller rooms, that's going to be um, higher frequencies. So if you're in a tiny, tiny room, you may have res resonances up in, you know, 800 hertz, 500 hertz, I don't know. In a little bit bigger rooms, you're going to have resonances at 50, uh, at 100, at 40. At, at some size of a room, the resonances go so low that you don't hear them anymore. And it's the best place to be in, but not everyone can afford a huge room. And also then afford the sound treatment materials to put in that room, because if it's big, you need a lot of that. And it gets expensive quickly. Okay, so that's the EQ action for us. Now what I want to do is apply compression. Actually, I'm going to apply multiband compression. LSP multiband. Compressor mono, yes. Now, what the multiband compressor does is it uses a bunch of clever shelving filters that attenuate or emphasize different frequency bands separately based on their amplitude. That's what a modern uh, multiband compressor does. I have a whole two videos about compression in general, so I'm not going to talk detail here. What I want this to do is even out the the sound and like make it fuller. It's going to sound bigger and more radio-like again. Or, as I've recently taken to calling it, GNU plus Linux. So what we need to do to actually make this thing do anything is rise the ratios. And you can just do it by clicking on this dial. So let's click on that angle to dial in 2.5 ratio of, okay, highest could go. Or, as I've recently taken to calling it. Now, what I usually do is, uh, instead of tweaking the thresholds, uh, which are ratio and knee, knee decibels, if, if you turn this down, it's going to start compressing or, faster, like this. Or, or does it? Or, as I've recently, oh, actually, we need to like rearrange it, okay. We need this to be about four and a half. Okay, let's go at 4,000 hertz. This could be a bit higher. This could be a bit higher. Or, as I've recently... Yeah, let's go. Or, as, as I've recently... Okay, if I rise or if I rise it, it's not compressing at all. But it's still very low, and I think I'm just going to rise the input volume. Give ourselves 15 more decibels. Lower that afterwards, so we're not getting smashed with the sound. Or as I've recently taken to calling it, GNU plus Linux. Linux is not an operating system unto itself, but rather another free component of a fully functioning GNU system. Okay, I think the highs are nicely attenuated, but it's a little bit too aggressive, and I think I'm gonna back off the ratio. Or, as I've recently taken to calling it, also shorten the release so it's immediately retracting and not like spilling the the attenuation at, at the sounds after it or as i've recently taken to calling it gnu plus linux yeah let's go and mute that or uh, or as i've recently taken to calling it gnu plus linux listen to the gnu plus linux or as i've recently taken to calling it gnu plus linux it's not hurting anymore, and that's what a de would do for us. Now, I'm going to probably add also a de after that, but this pretty much does what a de would do in a split mode. So I think we actually don't need a de because we viewed this multiband compressor to do the job of a de for us. Or, as I've recently taken to calling it, GNU plus Linux. Okay, what I want to do after that is apply a compressor and not, not a multiband compressor anymore, to even out the levels, finally. Or, 
as I've recently taken. Let's lower the threshold. Or, as I've recently taken to calling it, GNU plus Linux. I also want to raise the attack time a little bit. Or, as I've recently taken to call. And raise the makeup gain. Or, oh my goodness, that's loud, sorry. Um, or, as I've recently taken to calling it, GNU plus Linux. Linux is not an operating system unto itself, but rather another free component of a fully functioning GNU system made useful by the GNU core libs, shell utilities, and vital system components comprising a full OS as defined by POSIX. By POSIX. And by POSIX. Okay, I think the POSIX is a bit too high. And by POSIX. We, we get a little bit of a click. And by POSIX. As, as defined by POSIX. All right. Yeah, yeah. That that managed to do it. Computer users run a mod without realizing it. Now there's a bunch of compression and it sounds really like meaty and huge and you might not be after that kind of sound, but that's kind of the sound of a voiceover you'll hear in a commercial. <laughs> and since I've been doing some video game trailers, that's what I, what I was doing. Uh of course, you can back off the multiband compression and the compression and, like, make this sound a little bit more natural. And also, the acoustics of the room, again, are not perfect. System unto itself. So maybe you could try and tweak the gate a little bit to cut off the reverb tails even more. Maybe if I, like, lowered the release time. System unto itself, but rather another free component of a fully functioning GNU system made you... Maybe I'll need to lower the threshold of release so that it's... System unto itself, but... Hmm. Oh, I can incre increase the zone range. System unto itself, but rather another free component of a fully functioning GNU system made use... Okay, so that it's like, it has like a less of a steep slope. You know, if I embrace the zone... System unto itself, but rather... It's, uh, it's clicky, and if I lower the zone system unto itself, but rather it's a bit more gentle. And there's also a way to enable hysteresis so that we have like two different um, curves for like attack and release, but I don't really understand how it works. I'm not going to use it then. Oh, we could lower the reduction a little bit to also make it a little bit gentle. System unto itself, but rather another free component. Now, what if we just disable this now? Does it actually contribute anything good? Let's check system unto itself, but rather another free component of a fully functioning GNU system made useful by the GNU core libs, shell utilities, and vital system components comprising a full OS as defined by POSIX. System unto itself, but... Well, yeah, I can hear that there's less reverberation being, being audible in this recording when we enable the gate, so it is doing something good. I've heard some... Um Denoising artifacts near the end, though. Let's check that out. As defined by POSIX. Many computer you Okay. Um, I guess the gate also attenuates the parts where the denoising um, artifacts are most audible. All right. Uh, the last thing I will do is add a master limiter before we export this. And again, I'm going to use LSP limiter. This time it's going to be stereo. So we could export this to a mono file. As defined by POSIX. Now our levels are really low. We're not touching the compressor, the limiter at all. I'm going to turn this down in post, but now let's dial in the actual levels. Uh, as defined. And I'm going to lower my headphones volume. As defined by POSIX. Many computer users run a modified version of the GNU system every day without realizing it. Through a peculiar turn of events, the version of GNU, which is widely used today, is often called Linux. And many of its users are not aware that it is basically the GNU system developed by the GNU project. There really is a Linux, and these people are using it, but it is just... Okay, so that's that. I'm going to set my export marker. There really is a GNU project. My goodness, it sounds... No project. It sounds really over the top. You may uh, either be, like, delighted with that sound or bring a gag reflex from the sound. But, well, uh, if you need to get that sound and voiceovers that sound like this, uh, then now you know how to do that with free and open source software. 
Uh, let's just export it. I am going to do it for a 20 bar, 24 bit flag. Uh, we don't need any normalization because we're running a a limiter. Let's call the session snapshot and disable the time span and analyze the exported audio. I will export it and I will look at the analysis screen. All right, so here is our export and report analysis. And we can see that our volume has went over the zero decibel limit. Um, we should have limited our, we should have had like negative one decibel of um, output gain on our limiter actually to limit that. Because no limiter actually is going to be perfect, even if I use oversampling. And this is our vocals. The integrated loudness is negative 15.6 LUFS. And I think that's a very good level if you want to like have this voiceover be uploaded to YouTube or some other streaming services because it's going to be loud and clear, but also it has plenty of dynamics. As you can see in the waveforms, there's there's a lot of room for this to breathe, even if it's multiband compressed and then compressed and then limited. We're still like, we're not smashing it. Um, we could be going way harder at this and actually destroy the sound and make it unbearable, but it's not that bad really. <laughs> So I think that's a very good level, uh, and I did that like just by looking at the limiter's gain reduction. So, yeah, funny. All right, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you found it worth your time. Thanks for watching, and also huge thanks to all the people who are supporting me financially. If you would like to join them, please go to patreon.com slash anfa or liberapay.com slash anfa or it can give me a buck or two every month, or not. You can download this session, link is in the video description. You can play with it, you can practice editing, you can practice mixing, or just use this and, and make some memes, I don't, I don't know. The downloads are licensed under CC0, so effectively public domain, you can do whatever, you don't have to credit me even. Though an attribution is always welcome. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. I would just like to interject for a moment. What you're referring to as Linux is in fact GNU slash Linux, or as I've recently taken to calling it, GNU plus Linux. Linux is not an operating system unto itself, but rather another free component of a fully functioning GNU system made useful by the GNU core libs, shell utilities, and vital system components comprising a full OS